inflation has not really moved down. It is it is not uh, so far reacted much to our to our existing rate hikes, and so. We're going to have to keep at it. The advent of high inflation in 2022 marked the end of the period marked by extremely low interest rates and quantitative easing. For the time being, this change has disproved earlier theories about the economy and the markets. Central banks won't support harmed markets any longer. Selling speculative assets is no longer a surefire way to become wealthy, as Sam Bankman Fried of FTX has discovered. It's a brand new world. What remains to be seen is how long it will survive as 2024 approaches. What are the reasons that lead to such a situation? The unanticipated increase in inflation is the root cause of this turmoil. The Federal Reserve raised the federal funds rate by 4.25 percentage points to a level last seen in early December 2007. The Bank of England raised rates by 3.25 percentage points to a level last exceeded in November 2008, and the European Central Bank raised rates by 2.5 percentage points to a level last seen in December 2010, with the Bank of Japan being the notable exception. Bond yields have increased as well. The yields on 10-year gilts, German bonds, and US treasuries have all increased since the end of December 2021 by more than 2.6 percentage points, 2.2 percentage points, and 2.3 percentage points, respectively. By longer-term norms, rates are modest, but since early 2011, US yields have not been this high. Real rates have also increased. The yield on the US 10-year treasuries that are inflation-protected has increased over the past year from minus 1% to more than 1.5%. Inevitably, rising rates have caused asset prices to become unstable. The year ended with stock markets that were noticeably volatile but far from being cheap. By the end of 2021, Bitcoin had dropped from $65,000 to around $16,000. Will there be uncertainty in the coming years? The main concerns, outside those related to geopolitics and energy, are inflation and monetary policy in the future. Monetary policy in the significant jurisdictions is likely to loosen before the end of the year if inflation quickly declines. It won't happen if it doesn't. This uncertainty about the outlook of monetary policy must endure for as long as it does. As debt becomes more expensive, higher interest rates will cause casualties. The market instability is also expected to persist given the uncertainty. The combination is probably going to raise defaults and shake off overbought assets. Defaults will become more probable if rates continue to rise, not just in emerging and developing economies, where there is obviously obvious turmoil. High income nations will also put pressure on highly leveraged ventures. Recessions, according to Austrian economist Joseph Schumpeter, result in creative destruction. At the very least, expensive cash will serve as a necessary reminder that using leverage is never a one-way bet. The longer-term question is whether the free money period is passing through a blip or coming to an end permanently. In the great demographic reversal, Charles Goodhart and Manjoy Pradhan, among others, make the case that demographic dynamics would eventually lead to increased inflation and interest rates. Olivier Blanchard, the former IMF senior economist, contends that once the current inflationary shock has passed, the dynamics that have led to low real interest rates on safe assets will be in control. Who will ultimately be right is still a mystery. The degree to which the future differs from the pre-inflationary past will thus depend on how quickly inflation declines and how high real interest rates rise. However, the cost of both money and risk has increased recently. That presents danger and chance. Let's take a look at how the end of free money has affected the tech sector. The tech sector has been characterized for more than 10 years by two economic zeros. Due to the zero interest rate policy implemented throughout the Western world, the cost of money fell precipitously, allowing startups to operate at a loss for several years and piquing investors' interest to make enormous risks that could result in significant rewards. However, the zero marginal cost of the software sector allowed for circumstances like WhatsApp, which had 55 employees serving 420 million users before being acquired by Facebook for $19 billion. The growth of AI technologies poses a danger to the production model that has enabled the sector to achieve its current dominance, while governments around the world have increased interest rates in a last-ditch effort to contain post-pandemic inflation. As a result, the coming decade may be substantially different from the previous one. What is the ZERP phenomenon? Interest rates didn't exactly reach zero in most of the Western world, but they were lowered to such levels that they didn't matter when inflation and GDP stagnated following the Great Recession. In the United States, the Federal Reserve slashed interest rates to 0.25% in 2008 and left them there for seven years. Then, gradually raising them to 2.5% in 2018, they progressively decreased to nearly zero in the midst of the pandemic. 
The rate in the UK was reduced from 1% to 0.5% in 2009, and didn't go back to its previous level for the following 13 years. The Economic Digression The economy is significantly impacted by central bank interest rates in two ways. They effectively represent the cost of money on the one hand. When you borrow money, you must pay interest on it. If the interest rate is low, you pay less for your money and can borrow more of it for the same cost. However, they also offer a benchmark risk-free rate of return to investors. Your assurance of repayment when loaned to a central bank places a ceiling on possible investments. Zero interest rates are a very low floor, which encourages investors to chase after riskier ventures that might pay off. Therefore, low interest rates encourage more investment overall, open up credit, and perhaps jumpstart a stagnant economy. However, that broad push has extremely specific effects on the tech industry. The venture capital ecosystem, one of the few legitimate financial products that tries to offer a 1,000-fold return on investment, grew wealthy due to the poor rates of return from conventional investments. Yes, the risk was significant, but given the low interest rates, it was a gamble worth taking. Additionally, the influx of foreign investment was patient. Rates were low, therefore it didn't matter if the return was a year or 10 years in the future. A company that could guarantee millions of dollars in five years was far more alluring than one that would only make a small sustained profit in the upcoming quarter. The consequences continued to spread. Because of its tremendous advertising revenue, which is largely generated by firms with venture capital funding paying astronomical sums to recruit customers at a loss as they scramble to expand, Facebook is able to generate its enormous annual profits. However, ZERP is over. High interest rates and a decline in cash supply are both problems. Some of the immediate repercussions of this on business can already be seen in the shape of sector-wide layoffs and startups being anxious about protecting their runaway or the time during which they can exist without additional investment. What does the business's marginal cost look like and how does it impact it? Marginal cost is the other zero after that. The price of producing one additional unit of a product is its marginal cost. Expensive fixed costs like your R&D, manufacturing or CEO compensation are not taken into account. However, it forms a basis for the fundamental theories of pricing and supply and demand in textbook economics. Therefore, over time, production increases and prices decrease until they're equal to marginal costs. However, software ruins it, because practically everything in the realm of software has a marginal cost that is as close to zero as is irrelevant. There is no marginal cost associated with creating a Facebook account, downloading an app, or reading anything online. This means that they can be provided for free, and they commonly are, with the fixed production expenses covered by donations, sales of products, or other unofficial revenue streams in addition to advertising. Although we can't predict what the coming decade will bring, it's tempting to believe that the enormous technological revolution brought on by the development of AI will negate the significant economic shift brought on by the death of these two zeros. But I'm really not sure. These two economic realities profoundly shaped the past IT boom. How will the next one develop without them? Again, the straightforward explanation of economics is that the marginal cost establishes a price floor. If a product is sold for less than it costs to produce, the business would fail very soon. And after you've spent the fixed costs on producing your product, selling more of it at any price higher than the marginal cost is always worthwhile. What do you think? Is this really the end of free money? If you have some experiences to share, talk about it in our comments section. If you liked the video, hit the like button, and until next time, stay safe and see you all. Goodbye.